This is a webcast for modern European history. This webcast is to provide some final exam information for the second essay option that deals with the four trends of European thinking. So I want to repeat, you have two essay prompts that you have to prepare for. I will select one of those prompts and place it on the final exam and you will not know which essay prompt you have until you receive the final exam from the proctor. In a recent class, I went over this chart and the point of the chart was just to, to break down European history into three eras, a pre-modern era, a modern era, and a post-modern era. You can kind of see the dates here. Um, we are studying modern European history and we started in the fall with the Reformation, which uh, starts in the early 1500s. So the bulk of our class has been focused on this time frame, 1500 to 1945. And as you know, we've passed 1945 in our curriculum. Um, so now, today, we are living in a different time that historians call postmodernism. And I'm trying to show here in this diagram how the concept of truth, what we believe to be true, how we can acquire truth, what is right, what is wrong, has changed over time. In the pre-modern times of European history, remember we're talking about Western culture here, uh, was really kind of focused on the idea that we can understand truth, we can determine right from wrong based upon the revelations of God, both through his creation, through his scriptures, and also through the life of Jesus. And as we see European history move on, we see some challenges to that idea of a moral law or a natural law being revealed by a deity to now uh, develop the idea that mankind, through our intellectual abilities, to observe and reason, uh, to be able to ex experiment, to test, to solve. Now this starts to become part of the European mind that we, through man, can discover what is true. And one of the dramatic movements of European history is we see Europe being the, sa the, the center of Christendom from the early centuries to the 1940s, now break away from that and become a very secular-minded uh, continent that believes that there is no such thing as God. There's a strong atheism there. Uh, doesn't believe that there is such thing as a moral divine truth that is passed down to human beings. And so there is a rejection of those principles. There's a rejection of meta narratives, these large overarching stories of uh, who we are, where we came from, what is our purpose. And these are now being defined and answered on more individual terms. So it's more of a emphasis on the self. What do you believe? And of course, we can answer those things on our own terms. And if my answer to certain questions of who am I, where did I come from, and what is my purpose is different than yours, in the postmodern world, they both can be true. So that kind of sets up the backdrop for 
uh, modern European history and what we've set, studied, and all, also kind of establishes the backdrop for this for trends of European thinking essay prompt. I want to throw in some scripture here. Uh, Romans 12.2 says, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. It's an important verse there because it suggests strongly that before we work on our hearts and before we really look at reforming our actions, we first must start by transforming our minds. So I want to suggest to you that the mind, the collective mind of Europe has gone through significant transformation as outlined in this diagram. And since that intellectual transformation distances Europeans from who they were in the early centuries and what they believed, that's going to have a tremendous impact on their hearts and their actions. A ways back in the semester, uh, I introduced the threads of history. And this was uh, meant to be just kind of a, a recap of some of the trends, the intellectual trends that we start, start to see developing in the first semester of our course. And so we have man has no inherent evil, man is defining truth on his own terms, so man is the center of what is true. We have a stronger belief and dependence upon science, modern science, and we also have a belief in this idea of progress. So I've defined those with a little bit more clarity in the prompt. One, mankind has no inherent evil. We do start to see in European thinking, both at the intellectual level and then it becomes part of the mainstream opinion, is that when born, man does not have a natural evil. There is no such thing as a natural evil in mankind. There is evil in mankind, but it's not naturally inborn. Number two, mankind can determine truth. So we've mentioned this before, that uh, there's other factors um, that mankind will use to determine what is true. And when I'm talking about truth here, I'm talking about on a really large scale. We're talking about moral truths, the underpinnings, uh, presuppositions that society is based upon. And as we saw in the previous diagram, we're breaking away from God, we're breaking away from Scripture, we're breaking away from uh, Jesus as the center pl uh, piece of defining what is true. In th number three, we see science, and this could be related very closely to the second statement about truth, but that science is now a central tool, not only in helping to define what we believe, and what is true, but we also have a strong belief system that uh, through modern science we actually can improve the human condition and we can advance society on positive terms and make it an improved world, which then of course overlaps with uh, the fourth statement about human progress. There's a, there's a lot that's made about the uh, capabilities that human beings have to be able to uh, innovate and to discover. And this can be both ideologically in the mind, ideas. Uh, of course, it could also be things that are uh, technology-based. Um, so all of that wrapped together in this idea of human progress. Through human progress, we can actually achieve paradise. And so these are four intellectual ideas that are really starting to come out and seep into the European mind. 
in our first semester. And we want to take a look at these and see how these ideas become central in, t in the actions and events of second semester history. So that's the essay, Modern European History from 1500 to 1850, first semester, helped to influence the development of four trends of European thinking. One, mankind has no inherent evil. Two, mankind can determine truth. Three, science is cent central in shaping beliefs and advancing society. And four, human progress through discovery and innovation will make for a more suitable and stable world, fulfilling mankind's desire to live in a utopia or a paradise. Select three of these intellectual trends and evaluate how they have influenced the course of European history from 1850 to 1991, which is the time frame of our second semester. So that prompt is quite wordy. So we want to make sure that we can break this down. We can kind of look at the independent chunks that make up the prompt. First, we have a, the setup. So the first portion of the setup here is just identifying that in our first semester from 1500 to 1850, we do have intellectual development and four particular trends can be identified. The setup continues by listing those four intellectual trends, which I won't comment because I already have. And then the prompt finishes with the task. You must select three of these intellectual trends. And then kind of as your spectacles, as your glasses, as your microscope, your telescope, whatever lens metaphor you want to use, you want to explore the second semester through the lenses of those three intellectual trends and then evaluate how you can see those trends that have influenced the course of European history from 1850 to 1991. which is the time frame of the second semester. And as you begin to look and find, you want to start developing a brainstorm or even a formal outline of these pieces that seem to reflect the influence of the intellectual trends of the first semester. And then you'll be able to pull from that and start to develop your argument or your thesis. And so really, this thesis is going to be a bit on the complex side because you're dealing with a number of different trends. So you can see here on my graph, I have you know words that are just trying to highlight the essence of those four trends. You're only going to pick three. I have four listed. You'll pick three of those. And that's going to be kind of the beginning of your of your thesis. You're going to have to kind of outline, if you will, or or kind of state, uh, the European thinking and added on to that in the thesis you need to clarify how those trends have had effects on European history so blending thoughts and introductions of these trends while also stating the effects is going to make for a lengthy thesis that is complex. We don't want it to be complicated if we want it to be complex and clear. So really do a, some good thinking first to find some specifics that you can argue, then work the words out on paper, maybe multiple times. Memorize that st thesis statement and really put some good thinking to this. Of course, uh, at the bottom here below this dotted line, I just have for you the list of units of the second semester. That's that's going to allow you to, to look for historical events and actions 
from our time frame of the second semester that you think are a byproduct or an effect of intellectual thinking that began to influence the course of European history. And I do want to just post the rubric. The rubric is part of the handout of the final exam information sheet. Uh, this is pretty much the rubric that we've been using all year. You uh, can see the point values to the, the different parts of the essay. Um, this is pretty much the rubric that we used for the last formal essay that you wrote with your All Quiet on the Western Front formal research essay. So just be looking for what I'm looking for um, and how I'm going to grade it. That will help guide you to prepare you well to be successful on the essay portion of the final exam.